There are two stories from two different persuasions, but they're related. And arising out of those stories, there are two questions that are also related. And the first story is about a monk by the name of Kuzumi. And Kuzumi came from a very, very, very poor family. And he entered the monastery when he was about seven years old. But from even those early days, it was noticed that Kuzumi was somewhat of a recluse. He spent most of his time in his cell studying the sutras, or he could be heard chanting. But at a point of time in his life, Kuzumi was inspired, inspired to write a treatise on the Diamond Sutra. And this was a work of art. And after it was disseminated, it came to the notice of the emperor of the day, who immediately called his Kuzumi to him and announced that he was going to be designated as the new abbot of his own personal temple. Now, of course, the ordination was arranged with great pomp and ceremony, and Kuzumi was decked out in a regalia that would resemble that of any monarch's. But as Kuzumi was standing on the dais, looking out at the throng of people, looking up at him with such adulation, Kuzumi's heart swelled with pride. And just at that moment, from out of the cosmos, a moat came spiraling down, and suddenly Kuzumi felt as though some large insect had bit him on the thigh. Now he didn't notice this throughout all of the ceremonies that were going on, but when he went back to his chamber, this was a swelling that was a great itch for Kuzumi. And very soon, a few days later, this swelling became an open wound, and that opened wound became a great ulcer. And very soon, he had these openings all around his body that were superating pus and smell. Now, of course, the emperor called his most famous physicians, but nobody could help Kuzumi. It came to the stage where his affliction was so great that it was unbearable hardly to even wear his robes. They would become saturated with that that was emanating from these sores on his body. So, of course, Kuzumi could not remain in his position. He stank. He was offensive. So, one day, he left the monastery and became a beggar, a wandering mendicant, hiding most of the time from people, taking what scraps he could to live off. He was wretched. His life was wretched. And then, one day in his wanderings, he came to a large lake that was still. And he looked in to that lake, and he saw his own image, matted hair, and the scabs of those sores that had healed, and those that were superating still. And he felt himself to be that abject wretch. 
But as he looked at the image in the lake, something happened. The image began to change. It became like almost a demon's face. But then it changed again. And as he looked, it had a certain familiarity about it. And then the image spoke to him. I've been waiting. I've been waiting to take my revenge on you. And when you showed pride, it gave me the opportunity. Several lifetimes ago, when you were the abbot of a monastery, I was a warrior who came to you begging for your help, and you arrogantly refused me. My heart was broken, my soul was shattered, and I was soon killed on the battlefield. But now I've taken my revenge. Kutsumi said, please, please, won't you tell me, I beg you to tell me, how can I expiate this wrong, this debt? And the apparition in the lake told Kudzumi what to do, and he did. After which, Kudzumi became a wandering monk healed of his affliction, but famous throughout all of the lands for the profundity of his teachings, the compassion of his actions. So the first question that arises from this story, as you've no doubt gleaned, is what is it that the apparition said to Kutsumi as being that which healed what was considered to be a karmic debt? And the second story is a story about Rabbi Adam. Rabbi Adam was one of those in the Jewish tradition who might be considered as what the Sufis used to say is one of the teachers of the age. Rabbi Adam was also somewhat of a recluse. He spent a lot of time studying the great book, the Torah, but then, at that time, there was, in that land, a sorcerer. A sorcerer who had learned all the ways of the occult powers of creation. And through these occult powers, he had learned that there was a book hidden in a certain cave that contained the mysteries that go beyond the laws of life. And anyone who possessed this book would have the power over life. So this sorcerer coveted this book. And through his magic powers, he learned that Rabbi Adam was one who was worthy to have this book. So the sorcerer found a way that he could get this book by using Rabbi Adam. So he afflicted Rabbi Adam. Adam with leprosy. Now Rabbi Adam had never had a sickness in his life, 
So he was greatly perturbed and surprised to find himself with this illness. No matter what was tried, nothing worked to ease or heal him. But of course this was the ruse of the sorcerer because he knew that Rabbi Adam would seek out the greatest physician in the land to seek a healing. So using his powers the sorcerer took over the place of the leading physician and he told Rabbi Adam that there was nothing that could be done for him, that he should leave society and not cause this to be given to others. He should go into seclusion. But of course the sorcerer made sure that the place of seclusion was to be in the vicinity of where the cave was that contained this great book. So using his ploys, of course, his whole plan was laid out and dutifully Rabbi Adam, covering himself, went up to the mountains where it had been designated, not far from the cave, and he kept himself away from men. But then one day a wanderer a traveller came by and Rabbi Adam hid himself, told him to go away. But of course we know who that traveller was. It was none other than the sorcerer himself. So the sorcerer, when he learned of Rabbi Adam's affliction, pretending, of course, that he was just a traveller, he said, um, I can cure you, I can heal you, but in uh, payment I want you to go into a cave nearby and bring me the book that you find there, it belongs to me. So Rabbi Adam absolutely of course decided that he would do this so he actually promised the traveller who was the sorcerer that he would bring the book to him. The sorcerer ran his hands over Rabbi Adam's body and he was instantly healed and then he sent Rabbi Adam into the cave. When Rabbi Adam crawled in the small aperture and felt around the cave walls, he came to a crevice and found the book in that crevice. When he took it out and opened its cover, he knew that he had in his possession something sacred. And he began to read even though the sorcerer had told him, do not open the book, it belongs to me. But Rabbi Adam read in that book that this book only belonged to whoever found it, into whosoever possession it came. And as Rabbi Adam read on and learned some of the mysteries, the mysteries that go beyond man's comprehension, beyond man's mind, he thought, how could it be that if this sorcerer has the powers of creation, that he was not able to take this book 
for himself. And of course he realized that this sorcerer was not who he, this traveler was not who he seemed to be. So Rabbi Adam came out of the cave carrying the book in his hand and the sorcerer was about to grab it from him. This is mine. But Rabbi Adam held it to him and said, the book says that it cannot be given to any other than the one who found it. The sorcery became very angry and said, if you don't give it to me, I will consume you. And with that, the sorcerer expanded so that he seemed to fill all the heavens and the surroundings. But Rabbi Adam was able to remain untouched and he was able to, you might say, vanquish this sorcerer who was returned to his normal size to find that he no longer had any occult powers and so he immediately took his leave. Now we know the end of the story. Rabbi Adam studied this volume for the rest of his days and in did, indeed become a teacher of the age, so to speak. So the second question that's asked, what is it that enabled Rabbi Adam to vanquish or in our parlance not to make real the sorcerer and his conjurings, his magic. So two questions arising out of these stories that we can no doubt feel the relationship. What is it that Kazumi was told that enabled him to be healed, to expiate what might be considered, as in the story, as a debt, karma. And yet we know on a, other planes has other meanings. What was it that the apparition said and the second question, what is it that Rabbi Adam had, did, to bring this sorcerer to be absent of any power What's your experience, life? <coughs> what is it that immediately, immediately renders the past, present, and the future, which contains the threads that are considered to be the cause and effect or karma of life, render it null and void. And secondly, what is it about us now that puts us in the place where we know what's real. 
we know those mysteries. And all that remains for us is the unfolding of them into awareness. And what is our book now? What is our book? What is this truth that we've attained to? Ponder the stories a little. Let them do their work in their own way in us. Because as no doubt you found, they do stir and allow our expression and understanding of what the answers are to arise in their own way in us. Thank you.